It's important to get that on camera, you know. Hey everyone, it's the Vigilant Christian Mario. It's me, Mario! And you're here for a video I've been wanting to make for a very long time now. I've been wanting to address individuals who call Bible-believing Christians homophobic. I mean, you call a spade a spade. If it quacks like a duck, you know. Because it's absolutely not even true. And in fact, these people that say this about Bible-believing Christians are in fact the biggest absolute hypocrites. Now the first thing that we need to do is look at the definition of homophobia. Homophobia is the hatred or fear of homosexuals, sometimes leading to acts of violence and expressions of hostility. So, does a real Christian display fear and hostility and do acts of violence on homosexuals? Absolutely not. So, like, where did you pull that definition? Out of your ass? I don't see that kind of definition really very often. Here, let me show you some more variants that I've been able to find. Besides the first one that I'll show again. I see Christians feeling that way a lot. Now, there are fake Christians in our society. Ah, the no two Scotsman fallacy. Westboro Baptist, for example, and Jesus warned us against them. He said that wolves in sheep's clothing would come amongst us, meaning fake Christians, devils who are simply dressed up as Christians in order to warp the minds of people in society to make them have a false perception of what Christianity truly is. Unless, of course, you're just picking and choosing what parts of the Bible to follow. By their false representation. We'll talk a little bit more about those fake Christians at the end. Now, I'll just give you a life example. I have a gay uncle in my family, and I love him to death. And he loves me. Do we agree? Do we have the same belief systems? No. He believes that homosexuality is innocent. I believe that it is. Well, it'd be kind of like someone saying something like, Well, I... I have a black uncle, and I think black people are inferior, but I still love my uncle very much. Do we let that disagreement destroy the love that we can have for each other? No. And racists who think black people are inferior can love someone black very much and say that they don't let it get in the way of their relationship. We still love each other, and our love surpasses our disagreement. And this is what I truly believe that we should have as a interaction between Christians and homosexuals in society. I love you so much, but I think you're going to burn in hell for eternity. But I love you. Does he show hostility towards me? No. Do I show hostility towards him? No. But if he told you that you're full of shit, well then you'd show hostility back. You'd tell him that you're being persecuted for your beliefs. Do... We love each other, yes. This is how we need to operate, brothers and sisters, and those of you who uh, just simply don't agree with us and are practicing homosexuals. No, we needed to tell you that you have hateful, disgusting beliefs, and it doesn't matter whether or not you try to put a smiling face on it. You think that gay people should remain celibate their entire lives or burn in hell for eternity because that's your belief system at least for the sake of society and the world. Or you could just stop believing in bullshit religious dogma that's similar to telling women in the Middle East that they must cover their entire body and only show little bits of their face or they're some sort of abomination to Allah. Let's get past this thing where if we don't agree with each other, then we hate each other. That's ridiculous. Well, you could just drop your bullshit belief that people are horrible and will burn in hell for eternity just because they have a different sexual orientation than you, you know. But of course to you, it's up to the gay people to kiss the Christians' asses 
when they tell them, oh, you're going to burn in hell for eternity. Yes, it's up to us to, to just be the nice ones. Yes, yes, so, yeah, bullshit. You're never going to agree with every single person in the universe, and if you're going to go around trying to push your belief systems on everyone and only like and talk good and, and care about those that agree with you, you got a serious problem. You're right. People aren't going to agree with everyone. Most people think that racism is wrong. Most people think that sexism is wrong. Most people think that homophobia is wrong. But to you, homophobia is great. It's wonderful. And when I run into someone that's homophobic, I should just be, oh, so wonderful. Yeah, fuck you. And that's what we're seeing in society, and it's on both sides. Uh, so we all need to challenge ourselves to love uh, past disagreements. So when I run across someone who thinks that black people are inferior, I should just look past their belief that black people are inferior. I shouldn't try to incite a discussion or negativity towards them because they think black people are inferior. I shouldn't try to discuss when I run into an, a MGTOW who thinks that women are inferior. I shouldn't be upset with them at all. I shouldn't have any concern about it at all. Oh, that's the way they believe. It's just a wonderful thing. No, it doesn't work that way, dude. Now, one thing that is manifesting in society that really we need to pay attention to is really Christian phobia. Now we see that in society is manifesting a reversal where now we Christians are starting to be persecuted for our belief system. So all these years of gay people being persecuted, atheists being persecuted, people of non-Christian beliefs being persecuted because they're not Christian, they don't believe in the Bible, uh, people being persecuted for believing in evolution, you know, uh, kids in schools being bullied all the time for a whole number of things because they're not Christian, they're not doing Christian things, they're not living Christian lives. But as soon as there's a little bit of, of uh, backlash at it, oh, we're being persecuted, oh, yeah, yeah, you're so pathetic. I mean, how many times do we hear, we're being persecuted because you want to say happy holidays instead of Merry Christmas? In the past, homosexuals might have been. You mean also in the present, but you don't want to view it that way. You just want to view it as, well, we're just expressing our religious convictions. But now, if you believe the Word of God, if you believe the Bible, you are now going to be hated. You're going to be hated for holding prejudicial beliefs. You're going to be hated for telling people that they're going to burn in hell for eternity. Yes, you're now going to be hated for that. You can't just say that shit to people and expect people to just put up with it. You're right. You're right, you will be persecuted for that, and with, with good reason. Did you know that Christians now are, are born-again Christians, are being basically ostracized from their family? Their family wants to do nothing with them because they stand on their beliefs that homosexuality is a sin. Oh, those poor Christians that tell people they're going to burn in hell for eternity. Oh, oh, their families don't like it when they tell people that some people are going to burn in hell for eternity and they're terrible people, but they say it with a smiling face. Oh, those poor Christians. And also those, those poor racists, those poor racists who think black people are inferior. Oh, they're being ostracized by their families. Oh, it's so terrible. Oh, and those sexists. Oh, the people who think women are inferior. Oh, oh, we need to feel so sorry for them. Do you see the level of hypocrisy here? In you, definitely. Definitely. You tell people they're not real Christians unless they follow it the way you do. But, you know, here are some examples of the way that you follow it. Uh-oh, someone said everything's A-OK. -okay. Oh no, it's the sign of the Illuminati! Oh no! Oh no, the Simpsons! It's the sign of the Illuminati! Oh no, a Legos movie! Watch out, the Illuminati! <laughs> I'm a real Christian! Only people like me are a real Christian! Let's take a look at what the word hypocrisy, or hypocrite, actually means. A hypocrite is a person who engages in the same behavior he condemns others for. So, 
This is actually what's happening in our society. There are individuals who are calling Christians homophobic and displaying by their action of calling us homophobics, which isn't even real and we just saw, that they are nothing more than hypocrites. Uh, no, not that we just saw. You gave a false definition that you just don't really find anywhere. But you know, um, what you're arguing right now is that um, to be intolerant of intolerance is just as bad as being intolerant of gay people. Or that, you know, being intolerant of racism is the same as being intolerant of someone for their race. You know, you're equating those things as the same thing. But this is sort of typical of the type of shit that many online Christians try to say. There are definitely some good Christians out there. But I'm not going to call them real Christians or other people not real Christians. I'm just saying people that are good people who are Christian, who happen to be Christian. The ones that are usually the nicest are the ones that pretty much drop all the shit that's in the Bible and go with just the kind of things that Jesus would say. But you're not one of those, so. They are condemning others, us, for the exact same behavior that they are displaying themselves. You choose to believe in the dogma of your religion. People who are homosexual do not choose their sexuality. These things are quite different from each other. People don't choose to only like people of the same sex sexually. You choose to believe in hateful dogma that's in your religious book. And then, of course, you forget about all the other stuff like, you know, sh eating shellfish, wearing mixed fibers, all that sort of stuff. You pick and choose what dogma to believe in the Bible. So, no, they're not the same. One thing is a choice, another thing is not. But you like to kind of swap it around and make it sound like you don't choose your beliefs. Well, yeah, you do. You do choose to believe those things. Do you know what else you choose to believe? You choose to believe that every time you're really just talking with your own conscience, that you're actually talking to God. You, you choose to believe that when you have high hopes for something, for something good to happen to you, and it actually happens, that it's, that it's an answer to prayer. You choose to think that you're connecting to God when you're actually just connecting to yourself. You choose to have this belief of being completely disconnected with who you are, your own imagination, your own conscience. You choose this. Well, maybe you don't to some degree. Maybe you were raised this way and you can't imagine things any other way. Just because they don't agree with our worldview, all of a sudden we're bigots, we're closed-minded. The words fit. You are bigoted. You are closed-minded. You are judging people off of certain passages in the Bible and ignoring all the other passages. You're picking and choosing what part of the dogma to believe from the Bible. Yeah, it does make you bigoted. It does make you judgmental. It does make you closed-minded. Those words fit perfectly. I know you don't like it, but it, sorry, it, it, the words fit. All sorts of names. You know what uh, you individuals call us Christians who stand on our belief systems that we're entitled to. And we're entitled to call you bigots. We're entitled to call you closed-minded. Your beliefs make you those things. We're entitled to say things back to you. When you tell us that we're going to burn in hell for eternity, we're entitled to tell you you're full of shit and that you're bigots and that you're closed-minded. Why can't you see this? Oh, it's hypocrisy. No, you, 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 you are hypocritical. Listen, individuals and people out there, we live in a free country and I'm allowed to be a Christian who believes in the Bible. You may not like that, but I challenge you to love me beyond my belief system because I will love you no matter what your belief system is. That's respect. That's how we respect one another in society and we live in peace and harmony with each other. What you describe is not love. What you describe is a false front. What you describe is a lie. We don't have to accept your lies. What you describe is the same thing that you find in Texas. You know, the phrase, well, bless your heart. And, well, isn't that nice? 
The other way of just being a hypocrite and engaging in the very same behavior, you're just fueling the problem of separating people when that's not good at all. Maybe you could just stop holding bigoted beliefs against people based on some bullshit reasoning from your religious book that you pick and choose what things to believe from it. You know, maybe you could stop pushing your religious dogma on people. You know, it'd be, it's pretty simple, but it's, it's supposed to be on everyone else to, uh, to have the peace. You know, if you tell me that I'm going to burn in hell for eternity, you feel sorry for me because I'm, you, you don't want me to burn in hell, you know? I'm gonna tell you, fuck you. Sorry, dude. When Christians feel that it's their right to discriminate against me in their, in their business, and to not serve me because they found out that I'm gay, yeah, I, I should not react in some positive way. I should react pretty negatively. To you, I should just be, oh, it's their belief system. No, go fuck yourself. Another thing to bring up, like I said, is the fake Christians. Be not deceived, people. There are fake Christians, and Jesus told us about this. Wolves in sheep's clothing that will purposely misrepresent what a true Christian is in order that you don't get it. You think Christians are them, when in fact, it's a devil dressed up as a Christian. A sheep. Wolf in sheep's clothing. The devil made me do it. Look what I can do. So, be not deceived, be on guard. Uh, stay tuned to this channel. I'm going to be absolutely exposing this satanic cult that calls itself the Westboro Baptist. What a shame. And those are satanic people who are literally possessed by demons. <laughs> so, if you say it the way they say it, they're possessed by demons. But if you say nice and you say, well, I think you're going to burn in hell for eternity and you're a terrible sinner, but I love you. That makes it that much better. That makes you look like a psychopath. At least the Westboro Baptist Church is kind of blunt about their, their feelings on this, and they don't pretend, oh, everything's wonderful. They are not true representations of the kingdom of God, trust me. Jesus says that those who do not operate in love do not operate in God. He who abides in love abides in God. And these individuals going with their signs, calling people all sorts of names, condemning them to hell, is not the spirit of the Lord God, not the Lord that I serve. Absolutely not. No, your Lord God says you should tell people terrible things with a smile on your face and say over and over again, I love you. I love you. Like, um, like on the, the movie Road to Wellville, and they have these, these sessions where they say, oh, well, you need to laugh and be happy. So they play this music, boom, jin, jin, boom, jin, jin, ah, ha, 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 Okay, let's be happy and say that we love people. And that's the way that you can be. The Lord God that I serve still stands for truth, but he does love. Yes, he loved all those people that he supposedly killed in the floods and loved all those babies that he killed. Just such a loving God. Oh, wait. It, it, God completely changed into someone else once Jesus came into place. Now, for those of you who may be uh, homosexuals and you might be coming to Christianity, Anyone gay would have to be out of their mind to go from atheism, where they're accepted, to Christianity, where they're told that they're an abomination and that they're going to burn in hell for eternity, with a smiling face. No, no, sorry. Um, anyone who would do that has to be kind of insane or they have to have some sort of mental issue going on. Here's what I'm going to tell you is my belief system. This is how I've interpreted the Bible. Did you hear yourself? And yet you're going to call some Christians not real Christians. They're really of the devil. When I ask that you pray for the Holy Spirit to instruct you on this. I do believe homosexuality is a sin. And you think that gay people are going to convert to your belief? What if you weren't able to cover up your gay tendencies? What if you didn't have attractions to women? What if you only had attractions to men? I mean, it's pretty obvious you're covering up your bisexuality. So what if, what if you weren't able to cover up your homosexuality? 
and you had to live your life completely celibate or be considered someone that's going to burn in hell for eternity. How would you feel about that? I don't think you'd feel very good about it. I think you would probably find some way to not be a Christian. You'd probably go to a Universalist uh, Unitarian, you'd probably go Pagan, you'd probably go something else because this idea that your very existence is an abomination is not very fun to live with. I, I don't think you would still be a Christian. And your expectations of gay men or gay anyone to convert to your religion when you just said what you did? You're, you're nuts, dude. When I study the Bible, I don't see anything else. You don't see the entries about mixed fibers or shellfish or any of that either, apparently. Now, when we come into Christ Jesus, we are born again. Where's the placenta? Where's my dinner? The old man dies and the new person is given new life. I believe that through the operation of the Holy Spirit, you can overcome the sin of homosexuality. And you only think that because you're actually bisexual, and for you it's a choice. For other people it's not. But you know. And that God will change your heart and change your desires. I've seen it happen many, many times. There are many testimonies of people who came to the Lord Jesus and their sexuality was healed, and they were brought back into a natural form of sexual orientation. So you're not just a metrosexual. And no, you don't know anyone that that's happened to. Um, otherwise, you'd name them and talk about how, you know, how long you've known them or something like that. But you don't know anyone. You know about these stories you've read on your bullshit uh, Christian websites. Um, you know about people who have sort of become celibate. You know about people who were bisexual, who are able to uh, chastise their own bisexuality. Uh, but you don't know anyone personally. Because if you did, you'd at least give some names or something. But you don't know shit. You don't know shit. Now, for those of you who would say that people are born homosexual, I would like to address that as well. I think I would agree with that. We are born into a fallen world. The Bible definitely does talk about the fact that we live in a fallen world system. We're not born in a good way. I prayed to Jesus and he made me white. He made me white and he changed the color of my eyes. He changed the color of my eyes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We have a predisposition already in us to lean us towards sinfulness. So God created us to be sinful. And unless we give up our free will, and follow his rules exactly, we'll burn in hell for eternity. So he created us as these giant torture devices. Oh, no, no, dude, no. You expect people to believe that shit? You're fucking nuts. So just, we're all born sinners. So that would be like people saying, well, I've been born a sinner, so hey, let me just sin, kill, steal. Let me indulge in the sins because I was born that way. Yeah, we're all born sinners, and that's why we all need to be born again. Where's that placenta? I'm trying to find the placenta. No, dude, we are simply animals on this planet. We are basically part of the ecosystem on this planet. We are simply animals. We're not chosen by God, we're not created by God, and we're not obliged to follow a set of rules written in some book written by man that's supposedly come from some imaginary god. We don't need that shit. We can have morals all on our own without these rules that you're saying that we have to follow, otherwise we're going to burn in hell for eternity. Um, we don't need that set of rules. We just need to think about things. We need to use our conscience. You know, your conscience, the thing that you've shunned and, and you've replaced with this external thing because you don't think you have a conscience. You know, that thing. That thing you don't even know exists. You know. Do you understand that? You're born sin broken. I'm not born broken, neither are you. We're born what we are, as animals. And that's all that we are.
Adam fell. The world was broken. Panty liners fell. Jism. Crackers. Banana fungus. No, Adam and Eve is a ridiculous story. And then every human that comes after that is, is going to be broken. And every pat of butter, we need to give thanks to Sambo and the tiger running around the tree. Jesus will give you new life so that, yeah, you might have been born that way, but you will be born again and you will never be the same. And that brokenness that you were born with will be healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of grace, God. prayed to Jesus and he gave He-Man a better haircut. So that's how it operates in my belief system and you don't have to agree with that. I'm not going to sit here and be hostile towards you if you don't agree with that and I'm not going to hate you for not believing exactly what I believe. And I challenge you to love me in the very same way. I'm an individual and I'm not, I'm not doing this because I hate homosexuals, not at all. I'm doing this because you don't even understand the amazing things that God has done in my life, how much the Word of God has helped me. He helped you with your bisexuality, and now instead of drinking men's cum, you drink Jesus' blood. So be careful, right, when you're attacking me for just being who I am. Telling people that they're going to burn in hell for eternity while you wear a smiling face, if that's who you are, then you're an asshole and having my own beliefs because you're making yourself out to be a complete and absolute hypocrite when you do so. People have the right to defend themselves against hateful statements from you no matter whether you're saying it I love you, I love you with a smiling face or not. It, it really makes no difference. And you can be telling these people this stuff out of pity or out of, oh, I don't want bad things to happen to you, but you're still saying hateful things and people have the right to defend themselves. But according to you, if they defend themselves, they're being hypocrites. So just in closing, people who call real Christians homophobic. Yes, real Christians who sees the Illuminati in, in the, the okay symbol. Real Christians who see the Illuminati and the devil and Satan in Lego movies and in The Simpsons and just everywhere. Oh, the devil's everywhere. The devil's everywhere. The devil made me do it. Look what I can do. I have no clue what they're talking about. That's absolutely false. There is in society a new problem, Christian phobia, a hostility towards Christians who express our worldview because others need for some reason for us to agree with them to love us. They can't love us past the disagreement. Like I said, it's like asking someone to, oh, love me, you're, you're black, but love me. Even though I think that black people are inferior, you need to love me. Why are you so hostile towards me? <laughs> Or, you know, if you want to bring up Christian examples, you didn't say Merry Christmas. Uh, you're persecuting me. Uh, I have two gay uncles. Uh, I'll just close by saying the one that's alive, I love him to death. I don't agree with him. Uh, we're not hostile towards each other, but we love each other. And I, and I also had a gay uncle I never even had the chance to meet. You want to know why? He practiced a homosexual lifestyle that made him go to San Francisco, where he got AIDS and died before I ever had a chance to see him. You make it sound like gay people are the only people that can get HIV. You fucking sorry ass piece of shit. So don't tell me or my family that we don't know the devastations of choosing a homosexual lifestyle. Choosing? Choosing. And it's not a lifestyle. You don't choose who you're attracted to, asshole. God, you're so fucking stupid. The reason why you can't understand that it's not a choice is because you are bisexual. And you were able to make this choice. Not everyone is able to make this choice, asshole. Also, the people who are saying this towards Christians are absolute hypocrites. Hello, hello McFly, hello. Avon calling, yeah, uh, we have the right to defend ourselves against bullshit statements from you. 
just like black people have the right to defend themselves against racist white people saying that black people are inferior. You know, we have the right to defend ourselves. That doesn't make us hypocrites. But this is the fucking twisted mindset that people like you have. And it's for that reason why people are starting to really dislike Christianity. It is people like you. It's people like you. It doesn't matter how much you say, I love you, I love you, I'm gonna say everything with a smiling face. I don't understand why people say they don't love, they don't like me, they, they, they hate me. Uh, I love everyone. No, you don't. You are so out of touch with your own fucking conscience, with who you are, you've replaced it with all this shit. I mean, you might as well have joined a fucking cult. It's, it's, it's sad. It's sad. And you can't even see how hateful you are. You can be hateful with a smiling face and tell people, I love you all you want. It doesn't change the fact that you're hateful. And that there are fake Christians out there, like the Westboro Baptists, who are misrepresenting Jesus, but Jesus warned you about them, that they would come and do this very thing. It's the no true Scotsman fallacy. So there you have it, everyone. I hope this video was a blessing, that it opened up your eyes to maybe understand the real Christian view on homosexuality. Yes, we believe it to be a sin, and we're entitled to. And we're entitled to defend ourselves against your bullshit. And that doesn't make us hypocritical. We're entitled to be angry with when you say that kind of bullshit. We're entitled to that, and that doesn't make us hypocrites. And I hope you can love us past that. Accept what I say, otherwise you're a hypocrite? No, we're not going to just look past that. Sorry, dude. And accept us, that we are entitled to having our own belief system. Just like the homosexual is allowed to have his belief system. Why can he have his belief system and I'm not allowed? You need to hate me because I choose to have my own belief and system in this free country? Come on, that is crazy nonsense. What's crazy nonsense is you thinking that gay people don't have a right to defend themselves against your bullshit statements. This is the Vigilant Christian saying God bless each and every one of you. As always, stay vigilant and fear no evil. God bless. It's me, Mario! Hello!